डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन मेकेनिज्म ऑफ विजन नाउ हियर ऑन द स्क्रीन एज यू कैन सी वी आर लुकिंग एट वन बॉय नाउ एनी गेस अबाउट द प्रोफेशन ऑफ द बॉय सो लेट मी शो यू by profession this boy is a painter okay so here you can see and this is this is his table and on the table he is making one painting so today is a, a very shiny day bright day and the weather is also very good so he has decided to paint a painting and on the back side as you can see uh here you can see uh, uh not the clear one but uh, just behind this retina you will see a uh, one uh, mountain is there so this mountain this boy this painter is painting on his canvas so this is his canvas and as you can see he has painted the mountain <coughs> on this canvas so uh, how this boy how this painter is uh, seeing this mountain what is the mechanism okay so first point see light rays from the mountain enter in the boy's eye okay and when the light rays are entering in the boy's eye the light ray refracted by the cornea so over here in this figure here you can see light rays from the mountain entering into boy's eye and from the cornea this light rays are bending that means they are refracted and uh, we know that during bright light the pupil constrict and during low light or dim light the pupil dilate okay so pupil dilate pupil dilate for low light or constrict for bright light so today is a sunny day bright day so the painters <coughs> painters pupil is constricted okay so now the third point so as the boy uh, is looking when the boy see when the boy is looking uh, at mountain so mountain is far away okay so the uh, light ray from the mountain uh, they are refracted by the cornea and once in the eye the lens lens also refract this incoming light rays okay and as you can see on the back side on the retina an inverted image of the mountain is formed so uh, when the person looks at <coughs> the object which are located far away that time the lens flattens so when we are seeing when we look at the far away object to observe those object that time our lens flatten up and when the boy is painting in the canvas and when we when the boy uh, sees the painting that time uh, when the boy looks in the painting so as you can see uh, from the painting from the canvas light rays they enter okay light rays are entering cornea refract and then the lens also refracts the light rays okay so now the once again the inverted image of the painting is formed on the retina okay so this time for near vision okay to see the painting so when the painter is looking 
at his painting that time the lens become puffy so that means the lens become uh, somewhat somewhat uh, it look like the spherical in shape okay so here in the third point light passes through the pupil and is refracted by the lens the lens flattens for distant vision while the lens becomes puffy as the eye accommodates for near vision so all this all this uh, discussion we we can uh, include this uh, discussion of point number 1 2 and 3 under the heading refraction and focusing of light okay now now we are discussing about the photo transduction now what is photo transduction so here you can see this is the eye <laughs> okay the uh, choroid and retina and here you can see on the retina at the fovea centralis the inverted image of the painting is formed okay and in the previous lecture uh, we have learned about the various cells of the retina so in the retina you can see a pigmented cell layer is there and then pigmented cell layer is followed by neural cellular layer okay now in the neural uh, in the neural layer ganglion cell are there and the axons of ganglion they bundle together they merge together and they form the optic nerve so with the arrow here uh, this is the direction of incoming light and uh, this light due to this uh, incoming light the rod rod and con cell they are excited okay so now when the rod and con cell are excited so the process of photo transduction start okay so see here <coughs> the rod and con photoreceptor they are stimulated so photoreceptor hyperpolarized by the light okay in the presence of light they are hyperpolarized and now oh, now there will be a generation of nerve signal or the nerve impulse or the or we can say the generation of action potential so which are the events to generate the nerve signal nerve signal that we are going to discuss now okay so these are the two photoreceptor cell are shown are cons and the rods okay so now what is photo transduction see now photo transduction definition photo transduction means photo transduction is a process in which light energy is converted into electrical signal that means light energy is converted into nerve impulse or the action potential that is known as photo transduction now uh, in the photo transduction mechanism a rod and con cells are involved so these are the cell which are responsible for photo transduction these are the cells which are generating the nerve impulse for our vision so rods and cons are the specific cell and they are present in the new neural layer of the retina and uh, both the type of cell they are engaged in photo transduction okay now uh, uh, here in this paragraph they have uh, they have given the detail of the various cells of the retina so in our previous uh, lecture we have already discussed this segment the cells of the retina okay so we are moving forward so here now we are discussing this photoreceptor rods and cons so as you have seen in the figure 
uh, rods are uh, long somewhat longer and they are the narrower than the cones okay rods are longer and narrower photoreceptor cell now in our each eye hundred million rods are present okay and this rods they are primarily located in the peripheral region of our retina generally the rods are activated by dim or low light intensity okay so uh, during uh, during the night time or the evening time <clears throat> when the light is low when the light is dim that time we can we can see various object it is due to the rods okay for example here see when you are in an unlit room at night okay so at night if the tube light uh, of your room is switch off so even then also when the light is off that time also you are able to see various objects it is due to the rods okay uh, and this rod since they are involved uh, in our vision during the uh, low intensity light so due to that uh, we cannot uh, uh, differentiate or we cannot identify different colors during the uh, dim light okay or the low light so uh, later we will describe how the rod produce limited sharpness of vision okay they are producing the limited sharpness of vision the rods uh, whereas the cones so cones occur at a density of less than 10 million per eye so in our each eye there are 100 million cones are present okay and mainly mainly these cones uh, they are present in the fovea centralis region of our retina okay so fovea centralis is the place for our most acute vision okay so most uh, acute means the perfect or the accurate for the accurate vision the fovea centralis <coughs> of the retina is responsible so most of the corn cells are present in the fovea centralis now this corns corns are activated by high intensity light so when the sunlight <coughs> or the bright light under the bright light these corns are activated and these corns provide color recognition and precise visual sharpness so we can uh, we can identify various color it is due to the cones and the cones are also responsible for our visual precise sharpness okay so for our sharp vision the cones are responsible so uh, so we can uh, due to it is due to the cone that we can notice the fine details in color picture so uh, let's say uh, <coughs> we are observing uh, one painting and if the painter uh, has made a painting and if he has used various color so we can differentiate various color <coughs> it is due to the presence of cone in our retina Now in this figure, see photoreceptor cell, here see this is the retina, okay, see choroid is shown, then choroid is followed by pigmented cellular layer and then the new neural layer of retina and in that neural layer the photoreceptors are shown, rod and cone, okay. So as you can see, the outer segment 
outer segment of this photoreceptor is embedded in the photo uh, this pigment nucleus cell <coughs> so here this is the pigment nucleus cell <laughs> and you can see the outer segment is embedded in pigment cell nucleus so rods see some information regarding the rods see uh, more numerous than the cons so in our eye more number of rods are present in comparison with the cons uh, rods primarily they are located with the peripheral retina specialized for dim light night vision rods cannot distinguish color poor at sharpness of vision okay whereas uh, for cone less number <coughs> of cones then the rods cones primarily located within the fovea centralis respond to stimulation by bright light okay cones provide color recognition we can distinguish various color it is due to the cones and the cones are responsible for the sharp vision cones subdivided into blue green and red cones so there are three types of cones for blue color green color and red color now see <coughs> in the first of all uh, let me show you this segment so here you can see this is the this is the outer segment then this is the inner segment then the cell body uh, is shown okay then the final the synaptic terminal so in the in this outer segment so in the outer segment of both rod and cone stacks of disc okay stacks of disc are present and this stack for example over here if you see uh, this one is the disc this one is disc this one is disc so one on the other one on the other so entire stack is formed okay so this is the stack of disc and this stack of disc as you can see it is embedded in the pigment cell okay so here these are the these are the disc okay so the disc they are embedded in the pigmented layer now the membrane membrane of disc in the membrane of disc photopigments are present and each photopigment is composed of an opsin and a retinal so in the figure i am showing you for example uh, one uh, disc they have zomen and in the plasma membrane you can see uh, in the plasma membrane these are all these are all photo pigment so now they have enlarged the photo pigment so here in the photo pigment you can see retinal and opsin So I am showing you this entire figure. Okay. So now uh, let's discuss about the photo pigment. See, photo pigments are specific molecule, and this specific molecule this photo pigment they absorb light okay and that are embedded within the plasma membrane of the outer segment of rod and con so where this photo pigments are present they are embedded within the plasma membrane of the outer segment of the rods and con so we have seen in the in the figure okay exact location we are knowing now the photopigment 
as we have seen in the figure photopigment is composed of a protein and this protein is known as opsin so in the structure of photopigment opsin protein is there okay opsis opsis means vision so this protein is responsible for our vision then uh, a light light absorb absorbing molecule called retinal is also present in the photopigment and this retinal also known as retinin retinal uh, is formed from a vitamin a so from the vitamin a retinal is formed and responsible for light absorption okay so photopigment basically we can say now photopigment is composed of opsin and the retinal now there are there are several different types of photopigment that contain different opsin okay and each type transduces different wavelength of light okay so each photopigment is activated by different wavelength of light okay and then the nerve impulse is going to generated by the photoreceptor rod and cone so some photopigment may transduce may may transduce light of longer wavelength like the red okay whereas uh, some photopigment may transduce light of shorter wavelength like the blue however each photoreceptor express only one photopigment type so this is about the photopigment now in rods the photopigment which is present is known as rhodopsin okay rhodon rhodon means rose now rhodopsin rhodopsin is involved in the transduction of dim light and is most sensitive to light at 500 nanometer wavelength so rhodopsin involved in transduction and rhodopsin is sensitive to light which is having a wavelength of 500 nanometer so 500 nanometer wavelength of light induces this rhodopsin now the photopigment in the cones is called photopsin there are three different photopsin proteins are there in the cones and each type of photopsin protein maximally absorb different wavelength of light so in the cones okay photopigment is known as photopsin there are three different photopsin proteins and particular type of photopsin absorb particular wavelength of light now cones we can categorize cones into th uh, three different types on the basis of the uh, photopsin protein which is present in the cones okay and uh, the wavelength of light that this photopsin protein uh, are observing so based on that we can classified we can categorize this cones into three types so one type is blue cones and this blue cones can detect wavelength of light at 420 nanometer then there are green cones so green cone maximally absorb light at 531 nanometer and the red cones they absorb light which is having wavelength of 558 nanometer so there are three types of cones and they absorb different color wavelength of light now here uh, one graph is shown see absorption of wavelength 
on y axis they are showing percent of cone response and on x axis the wavelengths are mentioned so here you can see blue cones 420 then the rods they absorb wavelength 500 nanometer green cone they absorb wavelength of 531 nanometer red cone they absorb wavelength of 558 nanometer now once the uh, light <coughs> is absorbed by this photopigment then the process of phototransduction occurs so what is phototransduction so phototransduction occurs as light enters the eye so when the eye and uh, when in our eye the light enters that time the phototransduction start and uh, in phototransduction what is phototransduction so in transduction electrical signal <coughs> is generated by photo receptor cell okay that means uh, once the light light enters in our eye photo transduction occurs and now the photo receptor cell the rod and cone they are generating the electrical signal or the nerve impulse or we can say the action potential is generated by photo receptor cell so now what is the mechanism of photo transduction so here see on the right hand side they are writing bright light okay and this is the rhodopsin is shown and this one is the C's retinal so what is what is rhodopsin so in the structure of rhodopsin opsin protein is there okay and the molecule C's retinal so opsin plus C's retinal together they form the rhodopsin and rhodopsin absorbs light rays okay so rhodopsin absorb light ray rhodopsin means opsin plus cis retinal so here this is this one is the this one is the structure of cis retinal and here you can see in the in the structure of rhodopsin opsin and cis retinals are present so rhodopsin absorbing absorbing light then after absorption what is happening so once the light is absorbed cis retinal is transformed cis retinal is converted into trans retinal so here you can see cis retinal is converted into trans retinal so this is the structure of trans retinal they are showing okay now uh, now once the trans retinal is formed this trans retinal dissociate okay trans retinal dissociate from opsin so here you can see trans retinal dissociated from the opsin and now um, the remaining opsin opsin becomes activated opsin is activated and once the op once the opsin become activated this reaction is known as bleaching reaction okay now during uh, during night during low light or dim light what happens so during night see again uh, this trans retinal okay trans retinal uses energy from atp atp provides energy to trans retinal and trans retinal is converted back into the cis retinal now during night this cis retinal once again combine with the opsin so when cis retinal joins with the opsin so again there is a formation of rhodopsin now uh, during bright light during day time what happened uh, here the opsin is activated so now as the opsin is activated then what happens so first let me show you this figure photo transduction So now opsin is activated so here see in the light rhodopsin bleaches okay opsin 
is active so here see one one this is a one concept map photo transduction in a raw rod photoreceptor so this figure is showing the photo transduction in rod photoreceptor but uh, uh, if if you are preparing uh, for medical entrance examination uh, so you don't require to prepare this figure because uh, this is uh, too much in detail for you okay so uh, we are directly jumping onto this uh, conclusion that uh, rhodopsin uh, during daytime during uh, when there is a light good light uh, good amount of light when falls on rod so the rhodopsin bleaches and as the rhodopsin bleaches so there are all these events are going on so finally uh, after see now the transmission okay chemical synapse uh, then this thing okay after the synapse bipolar cell directly okay we are not uh, means interested in this detailing now what happened during day see bipolar cell is no longer inhibited and thus is depolarized during bright light so bipolar cell is depolarized so now bipolar cell they are releasing the neurotransmitter so the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor which are present on the ganglion cell so now the nerve signal or the nerve impulse or the action potential is generated in the ganglion cell now in the ganglion cell on the back side as you can see uh, the axon is shown so now the nerve impulse the nerve signal is propagating through this axon many many axon many axon of various ganglion cell they merge together and they form a nerve and that nerve is known as optic nerve okay so now now where this where this nerve impulse is going so now let's try to find out that now before that see uh, here uh, two eyeballs are shown okay our right eye and left eye so uh, whatever the object you are looking with your right eye that is known as right eye uh, monocular vision and the object that you look at is known as okay uh, monocular vision so uh, but it is not that the uh, it is not like that the the one uh, one uh, one thing that we are looking by our right eye and uh, with the left eye we are looking something else it is not um, uh, it is not like that see see we are we our our vision is a binocular vision so even though even though we are uh, our even though with our right eye and left eye we are looking at the different images but uh, <clears throat> but this two images from left and right in our brain center they are overlapped and finally our brain intercept our brain produces the binocular vision okay the merging effect of both the eyes okay so uh, the step by step okay now we are discussing the visual pathway okay so now visual pathway first step see so retina photoreceptor that means rod and cone okay now impulse generated and propagated through various cell then now impulse from rod and cone then it enters into it passes to the neurons in the retina okay so photoreceptor and neurons in the retina process the stimulus for incoming light this is one thing okay finally finally as we have seen what happened ganglion cell okay so in the ganglion cell nerve impulse generated and this nerve impulse is propagating through the axon 
so the exon bundle of various ganglionic cell they merge together and they form the optic nerve and this optic nerve exit the eye so here you can see this is the optic nerve and it is exiting the eye now now where this optic nerve is going so first these are the these are the exon or the fibers of fibers of optic nerve and here this point this point is known as the optic chiasma so what happens at the level of optic chiasma see optic nerve exon from the medial region of the retina cross at the optic chiasma okay once again optic nerve exon from the medial region of the retina cross at the optic chiasma for example over here you can see these are the exon and these are the exon which are crossing okay so this crossing of exon of optic nerve is known as optic chiasm simply now exons from the lateral region of the retina remain uncross for example this is the lateral side of uh, eye retina from the retina this are the exon and this side also okay and they are not crossing okay so from the lateral side of our eye the exons are not crossing at optic chiasma so now so now after the after the optic chiasma there is a formation of optic tract so now the how the optic tract is formed okay so some exon some exon from the middle region they had crossed okay they had crossed at optic chiasma and from the lateral side uh, of the eye the exons are not crossing so now this exon which have crossed and this exon those exon which haven't crossed they are mixing together okay they are forming a group so now this group of exon of cross and uncrossed exon now they are forming the optic tract okay now where this optic tracks are going so optic tract contain exon optic tract contain exon from both the eye because some exons have crossed some exon haven't crossed that's why so now the fibers of the tract this exon will project into they are going inside the thalamus or in the or they are entering in the midbrain so optic tract fiber they are entering in the thalamus or the midbrain okay now now lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus now majority of the optic tract exon project to the they enter into the lateral geniculate nucleus in the thalamus so here the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus is shown and you can see uh, majority of the fiber of optic tract they are entering into the lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus now pretactal nucleus of the midbrain so in the uh, which is shown with a green color so in this pretactal nucleus of the midbrain limited number of optic tract exon they project to the pretactal nucleus of the midbrain okay very few they enter into the pretactal nucleus of the midbrain then few fibers from the tract project to the superior colliculus in the midbrain okay and finally 
finally this purple color region of the brain so this purple color region not uh, uh, in this figure only it is not that the entire region is purple color but to make us understand the authors they have used the purple color to differentiate this part so uh, this portion is the primary visual cortex of occipital lobe so primary visual cortex of occipital lobe process information from the thalamus okay so the fibers first they had entered into the thalamus and then the fibers from the thalamus they enter into the primary visual cortex so it is this center it is the this it is this location of the brain uh, where we where we sense <coughs> our vision okay so when the nerve impulse or the action potential finally propagate into this centers primary visual cortex that time we are able to see various thing various object we can see we can differentiate various color when the information or the nerve signal when they reach into the primary visual cortex of occipital lobe okay now uh, this binocular vision so here see our our left left and right eyes have somewhat overlapping visual field so with our left eye we are looking at one thing and with the right eye we are looking something else but what happens our brain our brain interpret this two distinct visual images and uh, brain process this two distinct images and the brain unite them into one so even though our uh, right and left eye uh, uh, looking at two different thing but our brain intercept our brain merges these two different images into one so this overlapping of images from left and right eye uh, and interpretation by the brain provide us stereoscopic vision or the depth perception and this stereoscopic vision or the depth perception is the is the ability of humans to determine how close or far away an object is so we can decide okay, this is the distance might be that uh, this object is one kilometer away or the object is two kilometer away that we can decide okay or we can decide that the pen is uh, lying on the table or <clears throat> the mobile is very close to us that thing we can determine due to this stereoscopic vision now animals that don't have this overlapping visual field for example the horses and the deer may have a greater visual range because they are not having overlapping visual fields so it is possible uh, as they are not having overlapping visual field these horses and the deers so it is possible that they are able to see uh, they, their eye can cover a large area okay but and it is possible that they can uh, uh, see the two different object at the same time but they cannot perceive visual depth so in their vision they are not having the clarity the reason is because their brain centers they are not merging this overlapping images that's why so uh, even though their visual range is greater one but the clarity is not there in their vision okay in this animal horses and deer so this is about the uh, stereoscopic vision or the depth perception of the humans so uh, all the theory points we have uh, discussed and the figure i would like to show you all the figures okay so you go through figure
visual pathway okay so with this we have completed our discussion on mechanism of fusion i hope you have enjoyed this lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies my name is manish koshti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste